So welcome, Torrance Chamber Business Building Boot Campers. I'm really excited to have, boy, this is about, I think, the sixth or seventh, maybe the eighth um, event that we've had this year. We've just started off this year, and they just keep getting better and better. We've added new technology with a webinar, so you get the visual along with the audio and different ways to participate and network than we've had before. Now, there's a couple of ways to, uh, well, I'm going to be, so welcome. <laughs> Got to get my uh, all my technology going here. So um, I am your facilitator today, Karen Logan with Renaissance Works. And uh, before the call started, we were talking about logos and branding. And uh, I am so much more energized by our new brand with the Renaissance Man. Uh, we don't have to worry about an unfriendly face and uh, you know PG-rated body parts. Now we've got a man there who's uh, talking about energy and reinvention. And so I get a lot more excited about my logo now that we've done a little bit of rebranding. It looks clean, crisp, orderly, and that's what we're about for our business owners. So it's really a great pleasure for me to be able to host this Torrance Chamber group. And uh, it we're, we love, uh, as a business, bringing clarity and order, education, structure, to business owners and and we felt like this would be a service that would be really helpful for business owners there's a lot of things that we don't know how to do as business owners we're an expert at our craft or our service but we may not know some of the nuts and bolts of making our business grow and thrive and so the business building boot camp is about bringing in experts particularly amongst the torrents chamber to share their knowledge and their uh expertise so that we can continue to build uh, our skills and maybe find out people who we could uh, make a part of our team by uh, hiring them and bringing them on board. So um, I, we're very excited about continuing this on and to continue to build our membership and we keep growing and growing. So uh, the way our meeting is going to work today, we're going to have about um, 30 minutes of instruction. There's going to be, you can ask any questions throughout the presentation by using your question panel. And if it's a little more involved, we can open up the lines for some dialogue. We'll also have questions towards the end of the presentation as well. Uh, a great way to get the most out of this call is make sure you have a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil out there or your laptop open where you can take notes. Uh, maybe even cruise around on the web if Krista brings us some websites or some resources we might want to be le leveraging. And you can also be a part of the conversation out on the uh, Facebook. Uh, uh, the Facebook area that we have. And I think both Jill Marie, Candy, and some of the others are a part of the group. So, um, you know, if you've got an aha moment, post it out on the Facebook. Let's have a conversation going out there as well. So I, without, without further ado, want to move into our uh, presentation. And I would like to introduce our speaker, Krista Magison of Boutique Marketing Group. And there uh, you can see her logo, her branding, the owl that we talked about before we got started on the call. And uh, so I would like to introduce Krista. She's the owner and chief content creator for the Boutique Marketing Group. This is a, a specialty content marketing agency that helps small and mid-sized organizations hone their marketing messages and attract more clients, customers, patients uh, to their business practice. And who can't uh, want more, more customers, clients, and so forth? Uh, at Boutique Marketing Group, they create elegant and effective content for websites, email campaigns, newsletters, blogs, white papers, videos, flyers, and brochures. And they also help with brand management services, social media management, marketing consultant, print, and web. So I'm hearing that uh, Boutique Marketing Group can help you with the virtual of the internet, social media world, print, and with whatever the content is going to be in there. And I highly recommend Krista's uh, newsletter if you're not already a part of it. It is a, a jewel every time I get it. It's well laid out. It's a great model of how you might create a, a great uh, uh, blog. And also, it's got some great information you can apply. Apply <laughs> right away. Chris has been writing copy for websites and print for nearly 13 years. She's gone everywhere from hand coding websites um, to writing copy for nonprofits and working in with so many different kinds of industries. She's got a diverse uh, portfolio working with wellness businesses, plumbers, artists, 
uh, coaches, sheet metal workers, business professionals, web-based educational businesses, and I'm sure that's just the beginning of the list. Her diverse background places her in a unique position to understand the marketing complexities for small and mid-sized businesses. She's an ambassador with Torrance Chamber of Commerce, so you may see her at ribbon cuttings and different events that the Torrance Chamber puts on, and she's also a member of AWAI, Professional Writers Alliance. So I think that, needless to say, um, she brings a lot to the table, and it's good for us to have our note papers out. So, uh, Krista, so let me go ahead and unmute you. Krista, are you on the line and ready to go? Okay. All right, welcome. Hi. We're we're I so am on the line. Yeah. <laughs> we're so happy to have you here. And let me move forward in the presentation. Lead us along. All right. Well, um, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to do this and to really share about how you can use your website as a profit center. And so what I'm hearing uh, between uh, Candy and then Jewel Tone LLC is, you know, service providers. And service providers, you know, they're really in a unique position, even yourself, Karen. Mm -hmm. um, most service providers use their website just almost like, like a billboard or a business card. And they don't use it as the or consider it the valuable piece of real estate that it is and that they could use their website to source credible leads, uh, to find prospects, and to help with the sales, um, to be part of their sales funnel. So today, my hope is to change everybody's mind about how they can use the website and to look at their website holistically, like I said, as part of their, as part of your total sales process, part of your networking, of everything that you're doing, so that your website is really working for you. And, and I'm excited to share that with you guys today. Um, so, you know, to begin with, your website is an investment in your business. And it legitimizes you. I know everybody on the call knows that because the first thing somebody's going to do when they look at you, know, when you give them your business card, they're going to look to see if you have a website, if you're a real legitimate business. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's a very important thing. The other thing I want to mention about websites is that if your website is more than three years old, because there's a lot of new functionality that's important for SEO and for search, especially with mobile, you want your website to be responsive. And a responsive site means that no matter what device I'm looking at it, I'm viewing your website on, whether it's a laptop, desktop, uh, mobile, uh, iPad, or, you know, some other type of, you know, device that I'm using, I can see your website and it moves to fit that device. So if your website is old, you might want to think about, you know, redoing, you know, redoing the website or having somebody uh, create it so it's responsive. Um, so looking at the website, this first slide, web design and content with a purpose. And again, we're looking at everything holistically. You don't just have a website. You have a website that wants to work for you. So looking at you know, marketing and brand strategy report, that's the first thing you should do before you do your website. And most people think they want a website and then they hire a designer. And they're not really thinking about who's my ideal client? How am I going to reach out to them? What's going on with my competition? You know, what is my competition doing? And honing your messaging. And we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, further. Um, then you want to think about, now that I have my marketing and brand strategy report, what about my conversion pathway? How am I really going to get my website to work for me, to draw visitors in so that they become prospects and eventually they become clients or customers? Next, you want to think about website optimization. How am I going to optimize my website, you know, with SEO? Blog and social media optimization, you know, are also, you know, so invaluable uh, to this entire process. And then creating an editorial schedule. And this is where people really get bogged down. This isn't what our call is about, but it's one of my, one of my passions is I know that small business owners and entrepreneurs and even mid-sized, actually all business owners, <laughs> we get so bogged down with the content because it's all about providing content today. And I know everybody on the call knows that. I have to have my social media, I need to have my blog going, I have to have good cornerstone content for my website, and I need some offline content, and it needs to be consistent. So having an editorial schedule 
that is quarterly, this is just my tip for the day, a quarterly editorial schedule is going to help to minimize that pressure. And anyway, so that's for another call. But today, <laughs> we are going to talk specifically about how to create a conversion pathway. I can talk a lot. So, you know, we're going to talk about the conversion pathway today. All right. Well, you know, so that's great. Next slide. Well, that's great information. I just wanted to um, mention um, now SEO. Um, I, I know that's like, you know, kind of a technical term, but that's just how, um, you know, your searching gets, uh, you, you want to optimize how you're uh, appearing in Google, right? That you're like not on page 75, but you're on page that's one. That's part of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The uh, search engine optimization. So optimizing your website for certain keywords, you want to think about what would my customers and clients, how are they going to be searching? So, mm -hmm. you know, for boutique marketing, some people do look for boutique marketing, um, not because it's my brand name, because they want a boutique marketing firm. So let's say boutique marketing firm is a keyword search. I might want to have a page or uh, some keywords in one of my cornerstone pages that has, you know, boutique marketing. Um, and not just in my, like I said, not just in my URL. So, you know, that, that is technical and that's a specialty all in and of itself, but it's good to be educated on how SEO really works and SEO is changing uh, because Google is making some shifts. And we're going to talk about that also in the presentation today. All right. Thanks for that. Let's move on to the next slide, as you had said. Okay. All right, so creating a conversion pathway. And so it's exactly what it sounds like. We want our visitors, or let's say we meet somebody at the Torrance Chamber, they really connect with you. They're going to go to your website, you know, just to kind of see if you're a legitimate business, get a maybe read your about page. Uh, we want to maybe convert, we want to convert that visitor into a customer or somebody finds you on Google, or they find you through social media. So the conversion pathway is, is, isn't happenstance. It is thoughtfully thought out based on how your customer is going to relate to your website. And so it does take some planning. So we're thinking about utilizing our website for lead and capture. So that's, that's number one. It's no longer from today one, from starting from today, everybody has to make a commitment, a pledge, that they are not just going to put up a website um, just to have something up. They are going to think about their website for lead and capture. Can we all make that, that pledge? I, I, I can feel it that things are happening on the other end. So I'm just I so pledge. <laughs> yeah, you know what? As, as okay, kind of thank a, you as, very much. <laughs> as a fun thing, hey, if you're you're going to pledge that, you can raise your hand. There's an, a way to raise the hand on the, the panel, and it's just kind of a fun way to get engaged. So if you're going to make sure your website <laughs> is going to have a clear purpose, then go ahead and raise your hand on the, the control panel. All right, we got some yeah, hands we'll, raised. Woo -hoo. And we'll just know it's happening. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Woo -hoo. All right. We've, we've also pledged. Thank you very much. And we're also going to think about utilizing our website as part of our sales funnel. Okay, so how do we create that sales funnel? Well, one, we have to get traffic to the website. Two, we need to turn the traffic into leads. Three, we turn those leads into prospects and prospects eventually become customers. So it is literally a funnel and how are we going to do that? So let's look at the next slide. And I'd love any questions if you guys have more or, um, you know, please let Karen know. Yeah, just so fill how do we get traffic to the website? Oh. How do we get traffic to the website? One, we already talked about SEO and keyword search. You can use pay-per-click, blog content. Now that's really what boutique marketing, that's our specialty, is content marketing. How to use your blog content, uh, your guest blogging content to drive traffic to your website or to your landing page. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. You use press releases. An IFO is an irresistible free offer. And we're going to talk about how to incorporate that um, into traffic. Uh, social media, of course, you know, using your Facebook, using, and, you know, you really want to think about what social media platforms are best for your customers. Some customers, if you're marketing B2B just in general, typically you're going to be on LinkedIn. If you're marketing, you know, business to consumer B2C, then Facebook is really going to be fabulous for you, maybe Pinterest. Um, you know, Twitter's good for everybody, you know, so thinking about, thinking strategically about your social media, you know, what you're going to use so that you're not wasting time. 
uh, time is a valuable resource. Uh, networking, we talked about networking, that drives traffic to your homepage. Uh, and foot traffic, if you have a brick and mortar business, you can also drive people to your, to your web page through, through foot traffic. So let's move to the next slide. So let's go back to why you need good content. In 2012, 2 there were 2.5 billion internet users, 274 million in North America. Now that was in 2012, so we know that that number is increasing. There are 1.2 trillion searches on Google. Oh, my computer went to sleep, there we go. There are 1.2 trillion searches on Google. Now Google has today 67% of the market share. That's more than two thirds. So this is why everyone is so um, enthralled with what Google is doing because they control most of the traffic. Um, 2.2 billion email users with an average open rate of 28%. I read a report recently that that's even higher. Uh, so a lot of people are iffy on email marketing. They don't want to, you know, bother their prospects. But listen, people are opening email, and email is is an integral part of this conversion pathway process. It it really is the most important. Well, one of the most important parts. They're all important. And I'd like everybody to think about this. Somebody said this to me, and 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 it really was like a light bulb moment. People think that they can do business just with social media and they can bypass the email. But your social media, you can't open a social media account without an email address. And then what happens? Then Twitter and Google and Facebook, they send you their stuff to your email box. So even the social media uh, people, you know, the platforms, the social media gods are using email marketing. So I just would like everybody to keep that in mind. And what are people doing on the internet? Now they're looking for information. We live in an information-hungry society. So people are, are gobbling information up. So this is one of the reasons why you need, you need good content. And so let's go to the next slide. And you know, let me say this also about content. Content will set you up as an authority in your field. It helps with the know, like, and trust factor, okay? And it also helps with SEO. And this is how SEO is changing. Keyword search and everything, that's still very important. But now what Google is doing, when the internet was first, you know, when everybody started first using the internet, Google needed keywords to help users find what they were looking for. So way back when, that's when the SEO specialist would kind of game the system and do directories and, and keyword stuffing and all of that. And so, you know, there's nothing more irritating than you're looking for shoes and you get a directory of shoes instead of going to a website that actually has the shoes that you're looking for. So what Google is doing, they are changing their algorithms so that the search, instead of being based on keywords, is based on meaning, and it's very individualized. So if I'm looking for shoes, and they know that I shop at Nordstrom's, Nordstrom's and Nordstrom type sites are going to come up for me. So Google's getting smarter, and why they're doing this is because they want to maintain their market share. So they want you to provide good content, good quality content, so that they, it helps them to remain the number one search engine. So this quote I thought was very interesting. Core to what Google is doing with these new updates, there's been a few updates, the latest one is called Hummingbird, is a shift in focus away from keywords and towards intent and semantics, which are infinitely more relevant to users. So Google is always trying to maximize user experience. And that makes us as marketers, we think we need to do that as well. We need to maximize user experience. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, so it's, the next slide. It, it, it sounds like Google's evaluating, you know, our quality. And so this is even more uh, important a message. <laughs> if we're going to have um, traffic coming to our website and our website's going to be the profit center yeah. we're talking about, we have, we have more of a responsibility to have good quality mm -hmm. so that we can be found on page one or two of Google. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I oftentimes hear, you know, service providers say, well, you know, I just want to have it so people I know can go and look at it. And that's fine. But 
if you want to grow your business, if you want to scale your business, if you're thinking that you want to have, you know, like, um, you know, Jewel Tone LLC, you know, you might want to have a team of people working under you, you know, just meeting people one to one and just maybe sending them to your website out a conversion pathway is not a way to grow your business. So it really depends on what your goals are as well. So we're talking about, so we have our traffic and the traffic is coming to the home page and we have good content, which is helping also to drive traffic to our website and to our home page. So you have about six to 13 seconds to get your prospects attention or to get the visitors attention, uh, to let her know that she's in the right place to give her a reason to stay on the website. So if you look at your analytics reports in, in your Google analytics reports and you have a high bounce rate and a high bounce rate, it's, it's really relative, but let's say on your homepage, it's over 60% or 65%. That means that people are coming to your homepage and they're leaving. They're not being, they're not enticed enough to explore further, to look at your services page or your about page or see what your blog is or sign up for your newsletter. So you want to pay attention to that. Um, so you're giving her a reason to stay on the website and then give her a reason to share her email address because remember that email is really um, the, the linchpin in this process. So um, you want to give her a reason to share her email address. Let's go to the next slide, please. You know, this is so bad. I'm so excited about this. If you guys could see me, I'm like moving around in my seat. So <laughs> um, the irresistible free offer. This is one of the ways in which you, you entice someone to give you her or his email address. And this is Stephanie Meyer. She is the nutrition mom. She's been on self featured in self magazine. She's been on Dr. Oz recently. She's done a lot of wonderful things. Uh, I helped her with some of her branding and helped her write her video script for her website. And you'll see on her, on her homepage, there's the video and then there's the request Stephanie's three, three, three part video series. And so that's an irresistible offer. And she has a fabulous uh, video blog that she does. So, you know, people are going to get that and they're going to, they're, she's going to be able to cultivate a relationship with them through the IFO. So you need something on your home page to entice them to give you her, you know, her email address because, you know, people are, are protective of their email addresses. Um, and you may even want to have a confirmation. There's some, some going back and forth. So when somebody signs up for something that you want them to confirm their email address, because then you know that they're a good lead. Uh, it's because sometimes people just sign up for stuff because they want something free. But if they are spending the time to go back to the email and click, yes, I want to confirm, then you know that's a pretty good lead. I had a, a question so about that um, before we, yeah. I had a question about that, you know, double com, confer, confirmation. So you don't, you don't think you yeah. would lose people because they get uh, irritated, like I already said, yes. Um, you, you still think that's a way yeah, to. Yeah, you will. You'll lose people. You will. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, you know, it's really think about it, but most of the marketers that, you know, that I follow, you, they agree that you would rather have a smaller, more engaged list than a large list of people that just want something that they're not going to buy anything from you anyway. Right, right. So, you know, that, you know, think about that. I mean, if you're just starting out and you have three people on your list, uh, maybe that's not such a good idea for you. But, you know, if you've been in business and, you know, you really want to use your website, your homepage for, for legitimate lead generation, you might want to add that extra stuff. And I'm seeing it more and more often, you know, I'm seeing that more, more often, but that's right, a good thanks. question. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let's talk about video. So Stephanie had her video on and, and you know, so video increases conversions and sales. It gets people to stay on your page. We did a video email for one of my clients. And when I looked at the analytics, people stayed an average of five minutes on the website, which is a very long time. And the video was only two minutes long. So we had a lot of click throughs and a lot of interest. And that tells us a lot about what her, her uh, prospects are looking for. Um, so video is so important. And, and I thought this was a, this was an unusual statistic 
but it's an interest. It's a good one. In 2011, by real Twitter followers used a short video on their homepage that described their services and their sales, and their sales increased a whopping 216 uh, percent. That that's huge. You know, maybe they only had five people. <laughs> so you know, it increased to 20 or something. Yeah, you know, exactly. People mess around with those percentages. But, you know, even getting um, your conversions to increase from 6% if you have 1,000 people visiting the website to 11%, that's a really big increase in raw numbers. So, um, so think about adding video since we're, we've already made our pledge that we're going to use our uh, website for lead generation and part of our sales funnel. Heck, we might as well just go the extra mile and put a video on the homepage. You know? Absolutely. Let's just do it. Let's do it. I mean, you know, it, okay. with technology anymore, if you get your iPhone, you can make the video. If you've got, uh, you know, connect up with YouTube or something, uh, you can also, there's a lot of technology you can use in place. All right. Absolutely. You know, if you have an iPhone and three point lighting, you can do a lot, you know, <laughs> and some good matte makeup. I mean, you, you got it. So let, let's right. go to the next slide. Okay. So now that we've it, she's on the website and we have the email address, now you've captured the email, it's time to engage the prospect further or engage the lead and turn them into a prospect by creating an autoresponder series. And an autoresponder series is usually three, five, or seven emails. It can be 10, but usually three, five, or seven. And what it does is it educates the client further on what your services are, and it helps to establish authority, and it helps with that no like, and trust factor. So what you're doing is you're starting the conversation with them about, and the end game is to, you want them to hire you uh, or to buy your product or to buy your service. So you're taking your time, you know, really telling a, a, your brand story, you know, maybe hitting on their pain points, um, maybe talking about some other interesting, relevant information that's not, not totally about you, because these aren't all about you. You know, you're you're providing good content, and so the autoresponder series you put together one time, and when somebody signs up for your IFO, they immediately start getting this autoresponder series. So let's go to the next slide. So let's say now I've just been I've I've engaged my my prospect. I'm getting good open rates. I'm maybe even getting some click throughs back to my blog. And at some point we have to ask for the sale because we're not in business to have a hobby. We're in business to do business and to serve people and and you know and to think about our greater why. So in this sales cycle, you want to take your prospect to a landing page. And this is a landing page that I did for Staff Ranker, and this is a soft sell. How they use this page is brilliant. They would use go to LinkedIn because their business is B2B. They would target people that they, like the VP of operations or the VP of marketing, that they wanted to connect with, and they dropped them an email. Hey, you know, we're a new company. We have this, you know, this, we're launching this new product. It's really unique. Would love to get your feedback on it. Here's the landing page. And they're, they're, getting, they're getting people to come to the landing page so it's a soft sale, it's not a hard sale, and they're getting phone calls. You know, um, people want to have coffee with them, they want to learn more. So that's how they're using it to convert to have a deeper conversation with their prospect. Um, but let's say you're selling your bookkeeping services. So you don't want to take them back to the home page when you ask for the sale. You want to take them to a landing page and that is dedicated to um, the package that you're offering. Maybe you have a free 25% off for the month of January, you know, start off the new year right. And so your landing page is going to be all in one column. And it's going to talk about, you know, this is what's been going on. These are your pain points. These are our solutions. This is the offer. And you can find a lot of information about landing pages online. But that's part of the conversion pathway. Does that make sense? 
Um, I think there's some, there's so. definitely things to learn, but um, certainly you're laying out some general concepts that's like, hmm, I know I got, I got some more to learn, I think. <laughs> So thank you yeah. for that. And maybe we'll do it when, maybe we'll do a webinar just on landing pages on how to write a landing page. But this again is all part and sometimes depending on how complicated your service is, your landing page doesn't have to be long. You know, maybe it's, you know, buy a pair of shoes and get 25% off or sign up for, you know, my coaching service or your landing pages to get them to sign up for your webinar. So it doesn't have to be long, but it has to be specific to the one thing that you're talking about. So that's why you don't take them to your website where you have, you know, your IFO and you can, you have links to other things because then they're going to get distracted. You want to right. take them to the landing page where you're making your offer. Yeah. Right. And I've heard okay, a, confu the next page. How much a confused, <laughs> a confused mind doesn't buy, right? So we want to take them to a specific landing page, Absolutely. A, a single thing to make a decision on. Absolutely. So now you've made the sale. Yay! And we want to analyze. So you want to analyze your data. You want to, to see how well your autoresponder series is performing. You want to see where people are clicking through. So maybe you're getting, you know, a 40% open rate on your emails and you're getting a 20% click through rate, which is good, but maybe you're only getting 1% to confer. That's not good. Um, or maybe you're getting 5% to click through to the landing page and again, half a percent is clicking through, or maybe it's all good news. So you want to analyze your data so then you can, you can continually optimize your content. And Chris, now that you've made your, your offer. Yeah. I was just going to say, and the analyzing yes. the content that's through the, the Google analytics is where you're going to see that information. No, that's a good question. No, yes and no. You'll you will see some of it through the Google Analytics, but actually through your email your email manager. So if you use Eye Contact, Mailchimp, uh, Constant Contact, you're going to get an open report, a click through report, and you're going to be able to see where they're going. Uh, and there's other software in it. The name escapes me, but you can actually see how far down on the landing page they've gone to and where they exited. So there's a lot of sophisticated um, information out there and, and tools that you can use. But just for, you know, for me and for you and for Candy and, you know, just looking at your, what your email uh, open rate is, uh, looking at your click-through rates and then going, and you're going to know what your conversion rates are based on the click-throughs and how many sales you're getting on PayPal. So you can figure that out. Oh, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so we're analyzing data, but we're also nurturing our list. And it's generally accepted that it's more costly to acquire new customers than to nurture and retain the customers that you have. Uh, so you don't only want to sell to them, you want to you know, continue to, to nurture and to entertain your list because you know, these are your clients. And so people don't always want to feel pressured into a sell. So you really want to mix that up. And in fact, what one technique is, I'm just going to give you this other technique. I know it's a lot of information. You have your regular weekly newsletter and maybe it goes out on a Friday, but then when it's time for you to start making an offer because you have a sale coming up or you have something special that you want to do, that actually doesn't, that comes in a separate format. And that way people know that, you know, what's going on. It helps to separate that out. Um, so, yeah, so you want to nurture, you want to nurture that list and you, and the studies show, you know, that frequency works. And I know small business owners sometimes feel like, oh, I don't want to bother, you know, people because I hate that when that happens to me, but doing your newsletter once a month is not how you would build a relationship. So, you know, you want to think about maybe once a week, you know, sending, sending something of value to your list. Uh, Krista, I was surprised okay. I took, I I'm took a sale. Yes. I took a sales class once and the woman said that yeah. um, really you could go up to like some like 40 to 48 times a year with some kind of a, uh, you know, touch point with the person and they wouldn't be bugged. 
you know, it was like this huge number. It was like, you could almost yeah. hit them like once a month. I mean, once a week throughout the year and they wouldn't be bugged. And I was yeah. really, that like opened my eyes to the yeah. fact that, you know, frequency uh, just keeps you top of mind. And uh, people might be thinking yeah. about, oh yeah, I've been meaning to call Krista and, and I'm glad I got yeah. this reminder. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, absolutely. In fact, there's another, um, there's another book called The Challenger Sale. It's one of my. It's the best. It's the best book ever. And it was. It's based on a study that I think was done in 2008 when the economy crashed. And there were some sales reps. They, I think they studied like 6,000 companies participated in this. And they said, what kind of reps are still selling? Because there were people who were still performing above their quota, even though the economy was bad. And you know, we were we were having all that financial problems. And what they found was. They call them the challenger sales rep and not the relationship sales rep, which they were surprised. They thought the person with the best relationships would be the one that had the higher the higher sales. But it was the person who kept a, a little bit of tension in the relationship, but who also they, they help their customer and their prospect think really really outside the box about their own business. And so some of the VPs that were interviewed, they said, oh, we would pay just to have the conversation with the salesperson because they're so interesting. And oh, that's wow. really how your content is going to work too. So if you're helping people to think about their business in a different way, so if you have a specific target market and you're really thinking about, um, you know, how they can do business better, they're going to they're gonna be hungry for your, for your, for your newsletter. You know, so more the better. All right. Wow, that's a that's a golden nugget. <laughs> oh. I know. It's, there's a lot of good stuff. A lot of good juicy stuff here. So, it, do we have time to do uh, the two website analysis? Yeah, let's go ahead and um, move into that. Okay. So this is Candy, and she looks. She was very nice and very competent. I, I love her picture. I like that she has the um, the share icons on the bottom, and you know, and her. I like her logo. But you know, we need an we need an IFO, and you know, instead of just bookkeeping and payroll tips, you don't want to use tips. You want to use techniques and strategies. That's a better you know copywriting word that you're offering. Um, maybe put a video of you talking about your business or, um, you know, ways that you can help people, you know, so we need to add, we need to be more engaging on the website. And I know Candy, after going through this whole, you know, 30 minutes together, I know you're already thinking that she's going to get to my website and she's going to say, there's no video, no IFO. So, um, you know, so I, I would really, I would think about that. And there is a, um, blog post on my website on how you can write a video script uh, if you wanted to look at that but you know just even a quick about you video would be great because uh, you know you're, you're a dynamic person so well I didn't and add always remember I forgot to yeah I was gonna add your Krista. um your call yeah yeah Sorry, I think we've got a lag in the phone line, which is a little awkward, but um, because she was our speaker last time, I'm thinking that those, um, you know, the the, the IFO um, on, you know, affordable health care and how does it impact you? I mean, she had some great nuggets that she could create three uh, videos or audios and it would be pretty engaging and illuminating. And I think- You know what? That's a great idea. Attractive. That's a terrific idea. Yeah. And I think even the webinar that if you recorded it, that could be a great IFO as well. Mm -hmm. You know, get my, my webinar, you know, sign up and for my newsletter and get my webinar as a, on blah, blah, blah. I think that's a, that's a great IFO and it would be easy to incorporate into Absolutely. This. Yeah. That's, that's a great idea. Yeah. All right. Let's, wanna... let's quickly go to the, to the next slide. Okay. Okay. So, this is um, somebody that contacted me after I, I talked about the video and she said, well, can you look at my video? And I said, sure. And the video was really good. Um, but there's nowhere for me to sign up there. I mean, there's the contact, but there's no real email capture or engagement, um, even though her message is really, really interesting. So let's go to the next slide. So what I, I did was, as I said, you know, let's just rearrange your page a little bit. And, you know, and that will just even help 
with the eye, you know, how the eye moves. So no party planning, inventory, no selling, no risk, you know, and work from home. You know, you have your email opt-in, the video is right there, and then I get rid of this frame here on the left. But, you know, and then you have some content. So something, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, really complicated, but it does have to be engaging. And just contact us is not a good call to action. Um, a call to action, you know, what you want them to do. It might be, you know, contact me for your free 30-minute no obligation um, consultation or something like that. But, you know, you want people to, you want to tell people what you want them to do next. So you want those, those little contact us, if you're going to do that, to be more engaging, um, to be, you know, more active. Yeah, and it sounds so, like um, I think that's it. I think I talked your guys' heads off. <laughs> well, I think yeah. too, Krista. Um, I'm hearing you say that um, also be specific about that, so they know what they're doing yes. when they're clicking in. So, well, um, thank you so much yes. for that information. That was like so much. I took tons of notes. And I, you know, obviously there's more to learn, but sometimes we don't know what we don't know until we start getting a little, um, you know, the appetizer to the, before the, uh, the smorgasbord. And so obviously all of your years of experience are showing through and it shows where I have a little bit of a gap and I'm sure many of us on the call are thinking, yes, there's an expert there that I can learn something from. So I want to just open up, um, if, if you have any questions as we're getting through the wrap up phase, um, please. Uh, put those in the questions panel on the right side of your screen. And I want to thank uh, Krista so much for being a part of our education. I'm learning a lot and I'm loving uh, meeting more people in, in, the, in the chamber on a high quality, you know, deep relationship level. So Krista, I really appreciate you being a part of contributing to the overall value of the Torrance Chamber in many ways. Oh, thank um, you so much. You know, and Karen, can I say something? Go ahead. Please. You have such a nice voice. You have such a nice voice. I think you should have like a pod, like a weekly podcast. Oh, thank you. That's nice feedback. I, I'd love it. I think I listened to enough uh, talk radio that I, you know, I feel like I got, um, I'm getting uh, through osmosis some, some information about that. So thank you. I, I would like that because I love teaching and it would be a great platform. Yeah, I think you'd be great at that. Yeah, I have a uh, question has just come in from Candy. Is a video okay. created? Okay, here's the question: Is a video created with a small camera good enough to put on a website? Will it look professional enough? Okay, that's a really good question for your blog, for your i, for your you know um, YouTube. Absolutely, I think for your more important pages like your homepage and your about page. I would invest in a videographer to have somebody, you know, help you create um, something that looks more professional. If it looks professional, it converts better. So, yeah. you know, it doesn't, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars. Um, even if you found, you know, a student who, you know, has the proper lighting and can get the proper equipment and help to edit it, then that would be, then that would be great. But, uh, yeah. And if Krista, people were to contact you, um, would you have any referrals for them if they contacted you directly for a referral? Yes, I do. I do have a, I do have a, re uh, a referral. My um, videographer is actually in the Midwest right now, so um, he's finishing up his master's degree. But I do have another local videographer that is very good, very good. All right, excellent. Well, I want to make sure that um, Krista. I know I, I told you. I, you know, we want to know how can people learn more, and so I know you have provided um, some information. So let's go directly to that. So if people want to learn more, they can take advantage of these opportunity. This opportunity. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I have a, a new um, class coming up at the Life Oasis, and it's called How to Create Engaging Content in Seven Simple Steps. And what you're going to learn, if we can go to the next slide, um, is, you know, you're going to discover the secrets to creating engaging blogs, web pages, emails, and landing pages. So we're going to, and it's going to be a small group. I don't want more than, you know, 10 or 12 people because I really want to workshop with you guys on how to create your own content. You know, hiring a copy or professional copywriter sometimes can be very expensive. But the other thing is, is that 
you learn what good content is and how things should be structured. So it's really worthwhile. Um, you're going to learn how to create an editorial schedule to manage your time, how to create a detailed client profile to refine your brand image. You know, you'll be given templates on how copy should flow that you can use again and again to help to get you started. And when you finish, you'll, you will have created an email series um, to sell your product or service, at least one blog, an editorial schedule, and a cornerstone page for your website. Oh, so wow, that's a lot of stuff. Have. That sounds good. Yeah, so thank you. If you register before November 28th, it's it's 140, it's $147. It's three classes, and it's from 7 to 9.30, December 4th, 11th, and, 8th, and 18th. Um, so you'll be all ready for the new year. And it's greatcontent.eventbrite.com, and I'd love to see you guys here. It's going to be super fun. Well, that's really great. I, I appreciate that we've got a next step. That's always important when we work with our clients that there's a next step. And uh, so you can get in contact with Krista at what's your website or our email address? Boutique How can we best? Marketing group. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, boutiquemarketinggroup.com. All right. And they can get in touch with you there. So that's great. And thank you so much, Krista, for sharing your knowledge and expertise. It was a wonderful um, note filled <laughs> presentation with a lot of energy and good information. <laughs> and I just want to tell everybody before we adjourn for today that our next event is going to be January 17th. We always meet the third Friday of each month. We're going to take uh, December off and we're still working on speakers, but I am talking with some very interesting people that uh, I think will help boost your business even more. And spread the news, please. Tell others to join. They can um, request to join in our, our Facebook. Um, just have them send me an email. Uh, send them to the Torrance uh, Chamber webpage. I don't know, I'm probably giving you like too many options. But anyway, there's lots of ways to get in touch. But you can get in touch with me about the Business Building Boot Camp at k.logan at ren, R-E-N, dash works dot com. And we decided we'd make our email address short ren dash works instead of having people figure out how to spell renaissance. <laughs> so um, we can get people signed up for the business <laughs> building boot camp. And uh, by uh, accessing the Facebook group, you can listen to past recordings and view past webinars. So even if you miss something, uh, the Facebook group is a great way to gather. So thank you to everybody. Thank you to a special thanks to Krista for her expertise. And we will look forward to seeing you all in January. So bye for now. Thank you. Bye.